good evening for the record and welcome to the March 23rd meeting of the Falmouth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, first item on the agenda is a scheduled executive session uh, under General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3. Uh, as the chair, I'm making a preliminary determination that this executive session is needed. Uh, we will be going into executive session for the purpose of discussing Appeal 50-20M, Village of Brick Hill Road, LLC, 511 Brick Hill Road, West Falmouth, and we will return to open meeting afterwards. Uh, is there a motion to do that? I so move. Second. Second. Frank. Second. Mr. Finneran. Roll call vote starting with you, Jerry. Jerry Patamas, aye. Duffy, aye. Finneran, aye. Morse, aye. Murphy, aye. We'll go into executive session.
Development Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of March 23rd, 2023. We were previously open for the purpose of executive session. We are now at open meeting. Uh, Introduce members of the board. Uh, starting at my far right, the audience is uh, Gary Pettis, who is an associate member. Uh, moving from the audience's right is Frank Duffy, who is a board member. Mark Ferry, also a board member. My name is James Morris. I'm currently the chair of the zoning board. And to my left is Sarah Murphy, not the assistant uh, who's away. We're also joined this evening by Noreen Stockman, our zoning administrator, and Ashley Zell, who is our reporting secretary. The Zoning Board of Appeals is charged with applying the state zoning statutes as well as the town's zoning bylaw and including the voting on applications. All decisions are made in the public hearing process. Our goal is to hear testimony from the applicant to the public to allow a full and fair discussion of the project prior to rendering a decision. To begin, to begin each hearing, the clerk will read public announcement from the hearing and read pertinent information from the file. The applicant or the applicant's representative will then have 15 minutes to make a presentation. Time may be extended by the vote of the board. The board will then question the applicant. Next, publicly invited to comment. Public comment should be directed only at the project. Please refrain from making any personal or derogatory statements. It can include an opinion in favor or an opposition or ask a specific question about the project. Comment should be limited to two minutes. The chair will have a discussion in the interest of time if the comment is not All members of the public wish to speak should wait to be recognized by the chair. Please come to the podium. Please state your name and address for the record. Please speak into the microphone. This does not amplify your voice, but is provided for the benefit of entities and users. The board may continue the hearing to a future date or time. Otherwise, when the board is satisfied that enough information has been presented to make a decision, the hearing will be closed. After a hearing is closed, no more testimony will be taken. The board will then discuss the proposal amongst themselves and make a motion to approve or deny the application. The motion will be followed by a summary of key findings and conditions. An affirmative vote of four members, a supermajority, is required for the approval of special permits to carry into the board. So a split vote, for example, three to two, the failure to carry will result in denial. All zoning board of appeals decisions may be appealed as provided for in Mass General Law Chapter 48, Section 17. Previously stated, ladies and gentlemen, the board did meet in the session. Uh, first item up on over the evening is public comment. This public comment session is reserved for anything that is not specifically on the public agenda. Any member of the public group to make a public comment on something not on the agenda? Seeing none. Uh, we have continuations. We currently have three matters on the and requests for continuances on all of them. Uh, first up is hearing number 06522, NECA Development LLC 259-263 Old Main Road. North Thomas requesting a special permit to raise the existing structures and construct two duplex buildings and one single family dwelling on combined parcel. Good evening, Mr. Clark. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Kevin Clower. Uh, yes, as noted, we have requested a continuance to the next available hearing. Uh, we are looking at April 27. Is that a good idea I'm just going to stay here because I'm going to talk to the next two as well. Uh, next, we have hearing number 07522, Blue Moon Sea Grill Incorporated, 159 Main Street, Falmouth, requesting a special permit to allow a parking reduction for the proposed restaurant. There's a request for continuation. Mm -hmm. Again, for the record, Kevin Clower, I'm here on behalf of Bob Ament. Uh, as noted, a request for continuance has been submitted to the next available hearing date. Do we have the date in mind? Uh, April 13th. April 13th. Is that date? Uh, I, be I believe that was the date he was anticipating. Okay. So. Excellent. Is there a motion to continue to April 13th? So moved. Made. We have a second. Again. Made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's a vote. Mr. Clower, just for the, uh, the purpose of the record and for, I know Mr. Ahmed had made an inquiry, I will be recusing for that. Uh, any further discussion on that? I have a previously unknown conflict. Uh, finally, we have uh, hearing 10523, Bowen trustees of 102 Grand Ave Falmouth requesting a modification. Oh, uh, we need you to sign a extension on that, Mr. Clower. Uh, 105. 
2-3 Bowen, trustees of 102 Grand Ave, Falmouth, requesting a modification of existing permits, number 110-15 and 37-21, to remove condition number two of the special permit on uh, hearing 110-15 and increase the total lot coverage property currently under enforcement order by letter dated of 14 September 2022. We have a request for a continuance. Correct. We have a date, we have a date in mind. April 27th. Date that works for you, Mr. Clower? It does. For a motion to continue to April 27th? So moved. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Duffy. All those, any discussion on the motion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Is a continuation. continuations this evening. Uh, next up we have new hearings. Uh, first on the agenda this evening is hearing number 00923 Ryan, 140 Associates Road, Falmouth, requesting a special permit to raise and rebuild the non-conforming detached garage exceeding 900 square feet in size. So we have Michael and Regina Ryan, 140 Associates Road, Falmouth, Mass, applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuing, pursuant to sections 240 dash 10 2a and 240 dash 6.6 b formerly 243 c and 240 23g one parentheses b of the code of falmouth to raise and rebuild the non-conforming detached garage exceeding 900 square feet in size on the property known as 140 associates road and we have comments from town hall we have no comment from planning uh, water they need an upgrade. Current water service is three quarter copper. Service should be upgraded to one inch. Plan does not show the water line to the new house or the detached garage. This information needs is needed in order to comment on the plan. Health. Uh, they have a recently installed septic system that accommodates this, pro this proposal. Concom uh, had a hearing on 3 1. Is there anything in here on that? There's an email, okay. So I'll find that. And then we have engineering. Um, let's see. Uh, this application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Associates Road is a private right of way in this area. Number two, any connections or alterations to public utilities will require permission from the appropriate town department. Number three, the project must not direct any stormwater runoff to any public property, abutters, or public rights of ways. Four, a dry well is shown for the roof as we typically recommend. And this project falls on the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission and we defer to the Commission for Stormwater Management and Construction Erosion Control. And no comment there. Oh, I don't see the comment. Do I have the comment from back? Sorry. Oh, the board voted and approved the order of conditions last week. The order hasn't been written up yet, but there are two plans that were voted on. And that's what I have. Board the applicant, good evening. Good evening, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, for the record, Kevin Clower. I'm here tonight representing Mike and Regina Ryan, the owner of 140 Associates Road, uh, who are the applicants in this matter. They are seeking permission to raise and rebuild the existing non-conforming garage on their property. 140 Associates Road is located on the southeastern side of Chappaquoid Island uh, with, along West Falmouth Harbor. The lot is uh, just over 62,000 square feet. It's in the RB zoning district and the entirety of the lot is within a flood zone. Uh, the house and garage primarily are in either an AE 17 or an AE 18 flood zone. Presently, there is a five bedroom uh, single family dwelling with a detached garage. Total footprint of those structures is uh, just under 3,500 square feet which is 5.5 lot, cover, uh, lot coverage by structure of 5.5%. The garage is non-conforming as it's an accessory structure in the front yard located 32 and a half feet where 50 would be required. The property is otherwise conforming to setback and lot coverage requirements. 
the applicants have purchased this property in 20, uh, 2021. It is their primary residence and have been making improvements uh, to the property since their purchase, including a new IA Title V system, uh, which has been recently installed. The proposed garage, um, are now, they're now seeking rather to install a pool, which is not the subject of this hearing, but also to raise and rebuild the existing dilapidated garage, which is the subject of this hearing. The proposed garage is designed to serve both as a garage and as a pool house. Uh, at the rear, there's a covered outdoor cabana on the first floor, as well as additional recre uh, recreation space on the second floor. Though expanded in size, the lot coverage by structure uh, will be well below the 20% that's allowed. It'll be 7.4%. The lot coverage by structures, paving, and parking will likewise remain conforming. It'll be 11.3%, uh, which is far under the 40% that is allowed by right. The non-conforming front yard setback will be improved. It's currently 32 and a half feet. It will be improved to 43.1. Uh, the ridge height will, is proposed to remain conforming at 22 feet. Uh, though the game room on the second floor does meet the definition of a bedroom, it's not intended to be used as such. However, regardless of their intent, the health referral notes that the uh, recently installed system anticipated this change and uh, the system is more than sufficient for this addition. This does require a special permit under 240.10.2a, previously 243c. I had included a request on my application for 246.6b, which is previously uh, 23g1b. But uh, upon consideration, I don't believe that's required because this is only garage space for two cars. Uh, and there, I, had, I had wrongly thought that there was a garage in the primary dwelling, which there is not. So I don't believe that portion of it's required, but it does require a special permit under 10.2a. That section of the bylaw states that pre-existing non-conforming structures may be changed by special permit, provided they're not substantially more detrimental than what exists. The board is asked to consider, consider the standards of 240.12.1e and whether or not the alteration creates any new non-conformities, impairs the use and vistas, and reasonably conforms to the neighborhood. <coughs> Here, there's no new non-conformities created. The existing non-conforming front yard setback is improved by uh, just under nine feet, again, 32 and a half to 43.1. The lot coverage by structure and by structures paving and parking will remain well under the allowable uh, thresholds. There's no impacts to views and vistas. Associates Road is not a public way and the dwelling and garage will remain in line with the nearby homes in the neighborhood. This project as proposed represents a significant improvement over the existing conditions, will not create any new dimensional nonconformities, and will improve an existing nonconformity. Further, it meets the requirements of 240.12.1e. There's no adverse effects and certainly none that would overbalance the benefits. The site is more than adequate in size. The proposed garage does not change the nature or, uh, of the use of the property and it, it only serves to increase the owner's, uh, the owner's utilization. There's no impact on traffic flow or safety from this proposal. For these reason, uh, reasons and these considerations, I would ask that this board grant the special permit. I'll be happy to address any questions that you might have. So I'm gonna start, it's a little unusual, but uh, regarding the water service, are, are there revised plans that were submitted uh, showing water service out to the garage? Uh, I mean, we certainly can submit uh, revised plans as part of any, con uh, it could be conditioned as any part of any building permit. I didn't know if the plan had come in. No, I don't, so. Kevin, I don't know if I can approve this. Um, basically, you have not commented that Tappaquite Island has the best. You know, I thought about I thought about it, so. but Scott's not here, and Scott's the one that really likes that. So I was I was saving it, but it might be the prettiest part of town it is. because it is West Falmouth Harbor, which yeah, is right pretty corner, breathtaking. But no, um, I have no other questions or comments. I think it's very appropriate. Uh, Suzanne, um, in the in the garage, there's not going to be a kitchen or anything nope. in that. Um, I'm just, uh, it, um, adds nine feet to the setback mm -hmm. and I had a question, uh, relative, the, in the front, there's a, a cup tack in the driveway, understandable, they're not going to drive a stake there. That didn't appear to be nine feet and it's just some pointed out and the same thing is going to be on the next case. Um, the back, uh, corner of the garage is actually inside the garage as it exists now. Um, it appears because there was no stake in the corner. I was just wondering, I mean, we have our uh, staking uh, so, procedure tonight, but I mean, in some cases, like a stake that would put the offset on it mm -hmm. would help just so I could have placed that corner. I mean, I understand it's, it, it falls, it appears to fall mm -hmm. inside the garage, but, um, you know, I mean, I don't mean to get picky, but uh, I guess I am. Other than that, it is a beautiful neighborhood. Com comments certainly understood, Mr. Fenner. And your fill-in neglected to mention that last week, or last. 
Frank, any questions? No. Sure. No questions. Looks good. Public comment. Seeing none. How would the board like to proceed? A we'll discussion of the project. I have no discussion. I'm in favor. I have no discussion. Looks like we have plenty of room out there. Frank, I'm satisfied with the presentation. I'm satisfied. How would the board like to proceed? Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Yeah, close the hearing. Oh, oh, Stephen. Good point. Thank you, Jerry. Make a motion to close first. Is there a second to close yeah, the hearing? Second that. Yeah, that's Mr. Pitter. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, now. now I will take make a motion to approve. Motion to approve the conditions. Again. Second to Mr. Finneran. Uh, findings. Mm -hmm. Findings. Let's see. Uh, 140 Associates is an RB zone. It's uh, the overlay district is West Falmouth Harbor. Flood zone is VE18, AE17, and AE18. Um, I found the lot size 62,000, right? 62,100. 100, okay. It's a private road. Uh, lot coverage right now is 5.5 uh, and a 9.1 on the total. It'll go up to a 7.4 and 11.3 total. Um, I think I could see the height on the plan of the garage it would be 22 feet, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. um, we had the approval from Concom. Um, it's a 240-1028, 246.6B, formerly, I mean, other way around. Now it's a 243C, 243G1B. That's not needed, though, based on the that's testimony. That's not needed. Now. Okay, and I think that's all I have. Uh, no objections in the file. CONCOM did order uh, conditions not in file, but they will be incorporated into the agreement. Uh, let's see. Health indicated that uh, five bedroom new testimony was a five bedroom IA system. It's suitable even with the expansion. Anna, if I can just clarify that, Mr. Morris, it, it's a it was five bedrooms with the ability to expand. Right. Because the house was existing. A house had existing five bedrooms. House has five. Yeah. Health has testified that the system is suitable for what's proposed. Yeah. Uh, water upgrade to one inch. Applicant will submit revised plans per the water comment showing the uh, water line out to the garage. Concom. Got that. Any other findings? Conditions? Mm -hmm. um, times. Per plans. Right. Uh, we'll submit revised plans showing the water service. Uh, standard hours of work. No further stretches. Oh, no, they, they can do that. They, they, they oh, they do have room. They do <laughs> have plenty of room. 62 <laughs> points. <laughs> True. Um, anything else, Maureen, condition-wise? Um, so I would recommend that you reference that this is a single-family use for the premises so That's that fair. this is not intended as an accessory apartment. Yeah. And then, indeed, the garage, however it is finished out, cannot be separately rented. Mm -hmm. uh, the applicant stated there will be no... I would just ask that that be uh, without uh, further without well, further, further amended, from the board. Yeah, modification of the permit. Yeah, the yeah exactly. Special permit. Conditions on the right, anyone? Uh, All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's a vote. Thank you, Mr. Clover. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Sorry if we gave you a little tachycardia. No, that's... Uh, you know what? I needed a little jump start in my day. <laughs> <laughs> today, was, today was going too boringly. <laughs> Next up, we have hearing 13-23, 68 Sandpiper Circle Realty Trust, 68 Sandpiper Circle, East Falmouth, requesting a special permit to raise and rebuild the existing non-conforming single-family dwelling, increasing lot coverage by structures. And we have 68, it's an application 013-23, it's 68 Sandpiper Circle, uh, Real, Realty Trust, 2 Spring Street, Medway, Mass., Applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240.10.1c3, 240.11.3a4, formerly 243c and 24069e of the Code of Falmouth to raise and rebuild the existing non-conforming single-family dwelling, increasing lot coverage by structures on subject property known as 68 Sandpiper Circle. Referrals? Referrals. Let's see what we have. Planning, no comment. Engineering. 
The application was reviewed, number one, the application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Sandpiper Circle is a private right of way in this area. Number two, any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. Three, the project must not direct any stormwater runoff to public property, abutters, or public rights of way. Four, dry wells are shown on the roof, shown for the roof as we typically recommend. Five, erosion controls are shown on the plan and appear to be adequate to protect abutting properties and the public right away. Construction of this project shall follow the town soil, soil erosion and sediment control standard conditions. It's a document that can be found in the engineering divisions page of the town's website. References to the Department of Public Works Engineering Division shall be replaced with the Zoning Board of Appeals, who will be permitting, who will be the permitting authority for this project. And number six, we recommend the following condition be included. Upon completion of the construction, the applicant shall post the address for this residence with the numbers. And we had 13 letters of support and no letters against. Good evening for the applicant. Oh, thank you for the applicant. I'm Laura Moynihan, Falmouth attorney. And uh, with me tonight are Mr. and Mrs. Lombardo, the owners, as well as Tom Munker from BSS Design and Joe Batello from JB Home Design, who has done the uh, architectural plans. So this is Sandpiper Circle, which is in the Great Harbors uh, neighborhood. And um, number 68 is our house site. Uh, this is the existing home. It's a ranch-style home. Uh, it was built in 1973. The lot size is 10,000 square feet. It's a four-bedroom ranch home zone residential B and as noted it's in a developed neighborhood of Great Harbors where the lots are in this area pretty much the same size at 10,000 square feet. The existing lot coverage by structures is 23.3 percent. Uh, overall lot coverage is 26.54 percent and so we have an existing uh, non-conforming lot coverage by structure as it's over 20 percent. So the project proposes to raise and reconstruct the existing dwelling, remove the porch and the deck, construct a new two-story dwelling with attached garage, building height 25 feet 3 inches, increase in lot coverage by structure by 130 square feet or 1.3% to 24.6%, increase in lot coverage by structures, pavement and parking by 444 square feet to 30.98%, still under the 40% allowed. <clears throat> the pr project proposes to remove the gravel driveway at the front of the dwelling, um, install a new Title V septic system. Um, you do have a referral, I believe, too, in your file from the health agent who has mm -hmm. reviewed the plans and has no comment, uh, or I shouldn't say has no comment, but has reviewed the plans, the referrals there. Um, a new paved driveway would be installed. Uh, the front yard would be grass area where the gravel driveway would be removed to enhance that front yard area. So this is the existing and proposed site plan um, all on one page. You can see on the existing home, this is the gravel driveway area here in the front um, and uh, the deck area and the home here. The new proposed home is relatively in the same location. You do have a little bit of a setback increase um, at the front yard, a few feet further back. You get a little bit of a setback increase, about a foot here at the side yard, um, and a bit of a decrease of three or four feet in the backyard. But otherwise, it's relatively the same location. Um, these are the dry wells that you're seeing on the plan. Um, gravel uh, patio proposed at the back, so no decking there. These are the elevation plans showing the front, right, rear, and left elevation and the building height. So you see the garage here in the front, the front door coming in, second floor with uh, bedrooms. And the floor plans are in your file. So this is the first floor plan with the garage here, master bedroom here entranceway into the house and you have an open living area here with dining kitchen and living space second floor you have three bedrooms proposed an open area here off the stairway 
and this area in here is uninhabitable. It's not really attic, it's just an open area off the bedroom, but the, the roof height is doesn't meet building code, so I guess it might be considered a storage type area. Um, the section 24069E is the lot coverage up to 25% section that the application is made under um, by special permit. 20% lot coverage by right would be 2,000 square feet, so the existing lot coverage um, here is 23.2, and we're re requesting approval for an additional 131 square feet to 24.51%. The size and height of the structure I would submit is in keeping with the neighborhood homes. There wouldn't be any adverse impacts on the adjacent properties or the neighborhood, no adverse traffic. The lot coverage between 20 and 25% is characteristic of the neighborhood. Um, and the lot coverage analysis that we submitted indicates there are neighboring properties with lot coverage over 20% by structure. We've also supplied some photographs of um, homes to show you bulk and height. Uh, this is 16 Joyce Street, which is behind the locus or our property, um, direct, directly abutting it. Uh, this is 67 Sandpiper, same street. 8 Sandpiper Circle, same street. Uh, 28 Sandpiper Circle, the same street. And these are the couple of homes on Shorewood Drive, which are uh, the access into Sandpiper Circle is right here at the corner. And these are the homes at that corner area, which are relatively large, 345 Shorewood and 355 Shorewood. So those are just there to show you similar bulk and height. Um, the benefits of the project, it would be a very attractive new home, I would submit, for the neighborhood. Um, new landscape at the front of the dwelling with the removal of the extensive driveway system. No increase in bedrooms. A new septic system. Drywalls will be installed to control the stormwater runoff. And all required building setbacks and building height will be met. And in fact, the front yard setback will be improved slightly. The neighborhood support, um, you have 13 letters in your file. 62 and 72 Sandpiper Circle are direct abutters. Joyce Street, uh, three direct abutters in support. Um, 65 and 67 Sandpiper are directly across the street and also in support and six other neighbors in the neighborhood. So Mr. and Mrs. Lombardo have, I think, garnered the support of their neighbors for this uh, home raise and reconstruction. So with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank sure, you. Sure, start with you. Any no questions? questions. Frank? None. Mark? No, um, just two things. First off, uh, they did a lot with 130 square feet. It's impressive. Um, <laughs> and again, same as the last one, it appears that the front uh, corner of the garage is in the existing building. And I mean, it doesn't matter so much. And, uh, the driveway stake seems to be right on 21 feet because I paste it off and I do measure up the 10 and I pace off beyond that. But and it's not so important in this instance, but there might be some places where um, like uh, a stake with an offset would come in handy. Um, I don't think it's that much to ask. But anyway, that, that's all. I mean, I think you'll understand as well as anybody when it might be important. Um, that's all. It's a concern, and I might, you know, different time, different project. I might have a different. I thought it was a great plan with what you have. Great job. Thank you. I have no questions. Looks like a very nice project. Thank you. Public comment. Huh? <laughs> Seeing none. Motion to close. Motion to close by Jerry Potamus. Is there a second? Oh, we discuss. Oh, oh we can discuss. Sorry. <laughs> we need any discussion. <laughs> I don't, I don't so. have any. I, I don't have, have any. any. Okay, this is a very nice looking project. Yeah, I will second Jerry's motion. <laughs> re, uh, re, revisiting the motion to close the hearing. Do we now have a second? Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Mm -hmm. How would the board like to proceed? Approval with conditions. Is that the mark and a second? Was that you, Frank? Uh, Jerry. That oh, was Jerry. My apologies. Coming somewhere from my right. Uh, findings. Findings. Uh, let's see. It's in an RB zone. Uh, it's in Great Harbors, uh, not in a flood zone. Uh, lot size is 10,000, private road. 
Uh, lot coverage by structure is now 23.3. It's with paving and everything is 26.5. It's going up to 24.60. And with everything, 30.98. Uh, the height of the dwelling is 25.3. Four bedroom, 13 letters of support. I did, did see the health recommendation in here. I apologize for not reading it before. And I think that's all I have. There was a lot covered sheet submitted. Uh, it will be the second most dense house in the neighborhood. However, the addition is only 131 square feet, mm -hmm. given the 13 letters of support. Uh, the special permit will cure the pre-existing non-conformity as to lot coverage. Always good to do that. Uh, testimony of new Title V septic system for the Board of Health referral. It's appropriate for the project. Uh, it is project is and with the addition is keeping with the neighborhood anything else conditions um, as we have from the Board of Health the finished basement area should not be used as any bedrooms and per the applicant the inhabitable area should not be used for anything but storage Per plans, they're fixing engineering comments, uh, fixing of numbers. Uh, no additional lot coverage without modification of the special permit. Uh, given the size of the lots in the neighborhood, just a condition that uh, they can't keep stuff on property just to work with the Falmouth Police, just to make sure that the road is not being obstructed unnecessarily. Standard hours of work. Any other conditions? Uh, no, no further structures. Yep. Additional conditions on this side, Doreen. I'm forgetting anything. Uh, no, I am assuming that they are maintaining the existing shed. It looks yes. like okay. So if they ever desire to replace a shed, they can only replace it to the size it currently is without a lease. That's fine. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. That's a vote. Thank you, Ms. Moynihan. <laughs> Includes our new hearings on the agenda this evening. Next up, we have open meetings. First on the open meeting agenda, we have uh, minutes of February 16th, 2023, and March 2nd, 2023, and I believe we'll be tabling the minutes, a vote on the minutes of March 2nd. So has everyone had an opportunity to review the minutes of February 16th? Any additions, corrections, or amendments to the minutes of February 16th? Zero. Nope. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Finneran gets the second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's a vote. Number two in the open meeting, a review of the staking policy. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the proposed staking policy for the board? Should we consider delaying that till uh, Scott gets back? Uh, he has he expressed? He's a regular member, There's so no I just didn't. Why. There's no reason why you can wait if you would prefer. How's the board feel? Do you want to wait till I, he's back? I think or? we can wait, but I do have a question if I may just ask it. Of course. It, we're staking the lot corners, and then it says you also stake the side and rear lot lines. Doesn't that doesn't the lot corners take care of the side and rear lot? Not if you can't see them. Yes. So, well, yes, so, on a small lot because you can look at both so, so, and project it. But, but I think that that was my concern that. Uh, like what, how, how no. frequently do you have to stake it like every 100 feet, uh, I mean, 50 um, feet or what? Well, I mean, that, that usually they know what we're looking for, which is near the structure. I mean, if you can't see it by, you know, looking at each lot line, the part that you're considering is always near the structure. And any time they've done it right, they've done it in that fashion, you know. So right. you're satisfied with the, the ambiguity there? I, I think they I think they understand. Okay. And if they don't, we'll point it out. All right. Well, I mean, in the well, future. Okay. I think I agree with Frank, but if the majority of the board, I mean, I think it's redundant. I think the staking is there. If you can't for our see visual, for our visual, uh, I don't go out and pace off the distance with my feet. I assume the plan is correct in the state. So uh, I guess we can try it. Uh, I did have a question on uh, 
footprint corners of proposed structure if the proposed structure is on top of the existing structure I hope we're not going to have uh, corners you know I, I, I don't know what that gets us per se actually I brought that up this evening because the first time it ever came was an issue was this past week and it was on both of them yeah there were corners that were actually inside the existing building that's why I commented in some situations it's going to be nice to have a stake that gives you an offset on the case of the so the last one um, you couldn't really uh, tell the the increase of uh, nine feet um, in the setback because it was only about four feet in the front and that's where the cup tack was in the driveway I, and then I as far as your lock corner thing if you stand on one lock corner and you look to the other one down the property line if there was something in your line of sight you can't divine where the other corner is that's when the lot line is necessary relative to the structure that we're looking at I, I just think we're getting into minutia we don't have to have a clear line of sight I mean if that's the case maybe we should go good if there's but, well, suggested edits my suggest yes suggest that we for the minority, we could have a, a more in-depth discussion. Given that we're, I think we're going to yes. take a vote on this tonight, right. okay. uh, my suggestion is why don't we table until what's the next meeting that uh, Mr. Peterson will be back? April 13th. That we table the uh, discussion and or vote until April 13th. Okay, and then we could submit further. Yeah, Just further one more, questions. One more point, though. On your point that we have plans, I mean, how many times have I found mistakes on these plans? I don't, you know, I, I use them. But I don't we, find them to be gospel. The In the last are, couple of weeks, we've had the orientation of a building completely out of whack. The, so it's not. It's the not. Plans are gospel because they have to be done by a registered engineer. Well, I survey. guess I found it doesn't wrong have with to the be. Gospel. It doesn't have to be that we're not going to find mistakes. But I, I, I just think we get into you, uh, a lot of. We could get into a lot of minutia. We have a revised the, the, well, we the, discussion. The points Thank of you. both are well taken. Let's uh, submit some revised edits, or we can discuss this, or uh, we can have a more spirited debate on the 13th of okay. April. Good. Fine. Uh, number three, we have a request for insubstantial changes or modifications to comprehensive permit number 63 20, Helmut Circle LLC 14, Kendall Lane, Falmouth. The vote anticipated. Good evening again, Ms. Morning. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, may I make, just make a brief comment on that lot coverage discussion? Certainly. Um, I think that the that we are willing to do whatever the board feels would help them so you know because we we instruct the surveyors or the surveyors take your list and they're they're out there anyway so if it if it's an issue of showing you know somehow with a stake or paint where that offset is when it is inside the building I don't think it's a big deal for them to do that that's because they're out there anyway you know as but as long as it's clear what they're supposed to do that's the only issue is we give them the instructions and we want to make sure that we want to make sure that the the instructions for the applicants are right. clear for the, right. the folks right. coming out just so okay. that then we can but most of them are prepared and they do know what we're looking for yeah and if they will say so right I think we're moving along nicely in this respect okay I just wanted to point out that it's happy to happy to do what's easiest for the board <laughs> We're happy that you want to make us happy. Uh, always. Um, okay, so this is a notice of project change under the 40B regulations for lot two at 18 Kendall Lane. Uh, this is the approved plan. So uh, this home is showing a bonus room in this area um, and then a 10 by 20 patio at the rear of the dwelling. So what they would like to do is um, eliminate the bonus room, not have a bonus room, and eliminate the patio and just make this um, a deck area, 10 by 20 deck area. So we've applied for that as an insubstantial change under the regulations. There would not be a patio, there would not be a bonus room, there would just be the deck there in the back. Um, said in the application that we think it's appropriate for administrative review, um, won't ha should not have any adverse impact, and in fact, maybe even less impact with the bonus room area gone. 
and we're requesting that the board determine that the change is an insubstantial change pursuant to the regulations as it is minor in nature and appropriate for administrative review. <clears throat> no, I mean, it's, this is different than what we're used to. No. What's to argue with? Frank? No, I reviewed it and found it acceptable. Jerry? No additional comments. Fine with me. I agree. I don't believe it is substantial and I would be in support. Public comment? Would the board like to proceed? <laughs> Make a move, but we make a finding an insubstantial change and approve it. Motion, is there a second? I'll second that. Mark, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Close. Close the vote. Thank you, Ms. Thank Lamb. you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, number four, we have a request for insubstantial change modification of comprehensive permit 33-21 Allen, 59 Lewis Neck Road, East Falmouth. Hello. Good evening. Um, I'm Tamara Allen. Um, when I purchased this house, I guess there was a special permit to build a shed on it. Um, I'm so nervous. I've never done this before. <laughs> um, so I guess I, I'm asking for a permit to put a 8 by 10 shed on this property at 59 Lewis Neck Road. And I have, I do have photos of the property. If you'd like to, my property is. Oh, that's right. One for every board member. If you want to see. I'll stamp this into the record. It's uh, the blue house in the far left corner. Yeah. I have this too. If you want to, I want me to read it or you, whatever. Either one. I'd be using the shed. I do have four grandchildren that I'm raising for like bicycles and yeah. all their. Fun stuff, trash cans, lawnmowers. So just for the purpose of the record, uh, the lot that you're on is currently 11,321 square feet. It is. Your lot coverage is 8.9%. Lot coverage by structures, paving, and parking is 11.8. Uh, up to 40% is a met, uh, allowed by matter of right. Maureen, do you have anything you want to add or? No, um, I think though, I had originally written down that it was going to be an eight by 10 shed, but I think in your email you wrote eight by 12. I think, I'm pretty um, sure it is an eight by 10. Yeah. Okay, so why don't, well though, to be on the safe side, maybe we'll write eight by 12. Okay. Permit, just okay. so that in case it is 12 versus 10, we're on the safe side. Because it's by 12 on the application. Is it, a, did I write 12? 8 yes. by 12 on the application. Okay, then it is an 8 by 12. I just, 12. I just want to make sure we're not yeah. shrinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be under 100 under square 100 feet. feet. <laughs> so it doesn't I know it's no bigger than that. Questions by the board? Jerry? No questions. Frank? None. Mark? I couldn't have put it in a more unobtrusive spot. Uh -huh. <laughs> nope, sorry. Is this your lifeline? Yes. It company. is. It is. <laughs> the shed company. It's really an 8 by 12. Any public comment? Karen Morse. Yes, ma'am. Please. Hi, Karen Brissonette, Falmouth Housing Trust, and I was the developer of um, these houses. Um, and I, I just um, thank you for considering this. And it's. Uh, I just want to, for the people who, I know that you understand the, the regulations, but there are other people maybe listening that don't, and that um, if this were not a special permit project or a 40B project, it would be a by right for someone to have a 10 by 10 or 8 by 12 um, <laughs> shed, um, and that for some reason in comprehensive permits, um, we have a restriction uh, to have sheds, and so I'm just hoping that in the future maybe we can... We cannot do that because um, most of these have children. We have we have nine children in these three homes, so that's a lot of bikes, a lot of trash cans, a lot of lawn mowers. So, um, so in my future project, I will be I will be bringing that up because um, I th I think it should be a buy right because you mentioned, Chairman Moore said it was eleven thousand square feet, and I would argue that probably half the lots in this town are similar in that size or less because um, as we know, we have some very dense areas in this town. So these houses are not any different on any smaller lots than at any place else. So I would just have you consider that and that the community understands that as well. Thank you. Thank you. 
additional questions after the uh, comments. Do you make a motion? I'll make a motion to vote in substantial and approve, like Frank said. Before. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Duffy. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That is a vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you Thank very you much. Uh, number five, we have board administrative approval, uh, permit number 030233, excuse me, 23, AT&T 284 Old Meeting House Road, East Falmouth. Mm -hmm. Permission to modify the existing wireless communication facility with a vote anticipated. Uh, good evening, Edward Parry, P-A-R-E from Brown Ruddick, uh, one financial center, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm here representing AT&T this evening. Uh, this is an administrative review to uh, extend uh, an existing 150-foot monopole by 10 feet up to 160 feet and to add AT&T's uh, antennas and installation. Everything will be contained within the existing fence compound at the base of the uh, monopole. Uh, the monopole is owned by Industrial Communications. It was permitted back in 2014 by the Cape Cod Commission, and this board gave its approval in 2015. Uh, I think you have the set of plans uh, for the modifications pursuant to uh, federal law, which I'll refer to as the Spectrum Act. Uh, these modifications uh, you know, must be approved uh, if they fit within the parameters, and uh, as I explained in my uh, memorandum, uh, we satisfy each of the six conditions laid out by the FCC. We'll certainly comply with all building code issues. We have a structural report that passes. I know there was a question about lighting the tower. The tower does not have to be lit. I did provide the FAA report uh, as part of our application materials. Uh, with that, that's the sum and substance of what we're looking to do. I'd be happy to answer any questions or handle any specifics uh, that board members may have. Questions? Is there any maintenance plan? A maintenance plan submitted? Uh, no. Uh, we visit the site maybe once or twice a month once it's uh, constructed. Uh, we're just adding equipment into it, an area that's already cleared and fenced. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of maintenance. We can certainly... I didn't know if you were adding equipment. Do you take the old down? Oh, no. No, at and is a new co-locator on the site, so it doesn't have anything at the uh, monopole or at the, inside the compound yet. Difference between 150 feet and 160 feet. And if we had a problem with it, what could we do about it anyhow? <laughs> <laughs> Frank, well said. I'm satisfied. Very. I'm satisfied. Thank you. Questions or comments from the public? How would the board like to proceed? Mm -hmm. Close this. Motion to close. <laughs> All right, here's a, you know, a administrative approval to modify the existing request to approve the uh, modification of the Yeah, yeah, I have it right here. And, you know, just like offer a, there are some findings that we have yeah, a decision that are based on the applicant and what's oh, on okay, the record. So, so yeah, you know, we'll just incorporate those into any decision. If I could, are you going to incorporate the, f the conditions? I had, I had one suggestion and one question, if I could. Um, in condition six, uh, it says the tower shall be monitored 24 hours a day. I, I think it should be the carrier or AT&T, applicant maybe. Uh, we don't have any, we're a tenant on the tower, so we don't monitor the tower, but AT&T's equipment is 24 seven. So the words, the equipment shall be monitored 24 hours a day to satisfy? The, the equipment, the facility, anything that, you know, would be a specific reference to AT&T, we have no issue with that. Do we want to say AT&T? Or the applicant, whatever. The, the, the tower is the, is the issue. the equipment, that way yeah. it can That'd be fine. pass from, if you have a takeover of the company. Yeah, but that's fine. The, the only other question I had, we can't disturb Osprey Nets, obviously, but it says specifically between well, you April. You're getting yourself in a lot of trouble. Yes, exactly, and that's happened before. <laughs> uh, it says between April 1st and November f uh, 1st. If that's standard, I'm fine with it. I just didn't, I, I don't know if that's the period. Right, so the purpose behind that is that obviously Nesting. whenever you're doing your installations, yep. there's no prohibition to do that, but if during whatever installation or upgrade or whatever that there's osprey activity yep. you just want to ensure that if somebody has started that you don't interrupt what they're doing nesting right? season Correct. Yeah. right and so, i just i just didn't know if the nesting season was april and november well, if that's so the case so the problem with the nesting season is it has obviously with the change in weather and climate 
expanded. So rather than have a firm cutoff date of they had used maybe an earlier one, the question is, if you have somebody who's late to leave, what are you going to do with the right. last kid, right? right. So we figured <laughs> just to err on the safe side, we would expand that so there's no prohibition. Fine. I'm good with that. Actually, um, I think Ospreys are, they actually leave the kid and it's on its own. <laughs> right. It's but, 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 yeah, but you don't want to take their house away until they uh, decide to go. No. <laughs> I tried it. Thank you for the indulgence. With those modifications, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Close. Thank you for your patience, Calvin. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, number six, board discussion. Um, Thank you. Oh, actually, we we'll go on future agenda. Yes. Seeing nothing. Number seven, board updates. And number eight, future agenda items. First off, uh, and I want to put it off till Scott's here, and we obviously are my um, potential uh, petitioner's article. It was said that. Uh, we don't have the ability or the right or whatever to amend the bylaws and the, um, I found out in the interim that the uh, accessory apartment bylaw was amended by the ZBA and that's when that um, April 19th, 9th, uh, yeah, May 19th, 1959 date was put in. So we actually do and then of course any, any member or number of members can put in a petitioner's article because it's, it's an extension of your first amendment right to petition your government. But also, um, we've had a couple of them of late. These, uh, I think we need to have a discussion on these split decisions. Um, it confuses me. I'm not particularly comfortable with it. And um, I, I think we should, at some future, Speak about it, and just one more just, thing. Just, oh no, just to be clear for the purpose of getting it on the agenda. When you say a split decision, are you talking about where we approved part of it? Yeah, and not the okay. other part. You know, sure split, we... split application. Okay. Uh, not did I say yeah. decision? And then, um, in viewing the one on three roof terrace, I, I just went back and went through it, and we all missed something. It says in there. Um, Applicant shall not sell coffee on premise, premises, and then next it says applicant, applicant shall roast coffee on premises, and uh, the not was left out. It was just a mistake, but in the past we had a real problem with that in a different village in town where someone was roasting coffee. Uh, so I think we need to uh, go back and amend that application and make it correct, unless I'm incorrect. So what application? They're not. Uh, supp that's uh, the, the, the decision. Coffee you want to roaster. This, the, decision. the decision. Yes. Yeah. Um, it should have been shall not roast coffee on premises, because remember we had the issue in Woods Hole and it did, yes. it, yeah. it exploded into a number of other things, and if that's not corrected, um, and it's funny because I used to love going down the coffee aisle at A and B, not to <laughs> date myself, but uh, it smells completely different than the smell of coffee roasting. So can that be an administrative uh, uh, I would scrutiny? Imagine. Is there a change? I, I don't know what the hearing minutes said and things like that. That's why. Look at the minutes and the, and the, yeah, and the okay. video. Clearly, and it's just if a, it's scriv clear. it's a scrivener's I, error. I'm that sure it is. It's, it's and I could be wrong, but it's worth checking anyway. But nonetheless, I still I don't see the point in that. I think it confuses things, and that might be an example of it. That's a good, good spot. The video should help too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any additional future agenda items? Mm -hmm. Marie? Nope. We are working on um, bylaw, the bylaw working group is hard at work on um, correcting and updating the bylaw. Thank you on the right side. Our next meeting date is when? April 13th. 4-13. Well, uh, the next meeting will be 4-13-2023 here at Town Hall. We thank our few citizens for coming out and joining us. Good night. <laughs>